a Wikivide Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Thurgood Marshall Thurgood Marshall was an American lawyer, serving as Associate Justice of the Supreme Court of the United States. From October 1967 until October 1991, Marshall was the court's 96th justice and its first African-American justice. Prior to his judicial service, he successfully argued several cases before the Supreme Court. Born in Baltimore, Maryland, Marshall graduated from the Howard University School of Law in 1933. He established a private legal practice in Baltimore before founding the NAACP Legal Defense and Educational Fund, where he served as executive director. In that position, he argued several cases before the Supreme Court, including Smith v. Allwright, Shelley v. Kramer, and Brown v. Board of Education, which held that racial segregation in public education is a violation of the Equal Protection Clause. In 1961, President John F. Kennedy appointed Marshall to United States Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit. Four years later, President Lyndon B. Johnson appointed Marshall as the United States Solicitor General. In 1967, Johnson successfully nominated Marshall to succeed retiring Associate Justice Tom C. Clark. Marshall retired during the administration of President George H. W. Bush and was succeeded by Clarence Thomas. Early Life Marshall was born in Baltimore, Maryland, on July 2, 1908. He was descended from slaves on both sides of his family. His original name was Thurgood, but he shortened it to Thurgood. His father, William Marshall, worked as a railroad porter, and his mother Norma, as a teacher. They instilled in him an appreciation for the United States Constitution and the rule of law. Marshall first learned how to debate from his father who took Marshall and his brother to watch court cases. They would later debate what they had seen. The family also debated current events after dinner. Marshall said that although his father never told him to become a lawyer, he turned me into one. He did it by teaching me to argue, by challenging my logic on every point, by making me prove every statement I made. Marshall attended Frederick Douglass High School in Baltimore, and was placed in the class with the best students. He graduated a year early in 1925 with a B-grade average, and placed in the top third of the class. He went to Lincoln University. It is commonly reported that he intended to study medicine and become a dentist. But according to his application to Lincoln University, Marshall said his goal was to become a lawyer. Among his classmates were poet Langston Hughes and musician Cab Calloway. Initially he did not take his studies seriously, and was suspended twice, for hazing and pranks against fellow students. He was not politically active at first, becoming a star of the debating team. In his freshman year he opposed the integration of African-American professors at the university. Hughes later described Marshall as rough and ready, loud and wrong. In his second year Marshall participated in a sit-in protest against segregation at a local movie theater. In that year, he was initiated as a member of Alpha Phi Alpha, the first fraternity founded by and for blacks. His marriage to Vivian Bury in September 1929 encouraged him to take his studies seriously, and he graduated from Lincoln with honors Bachelor of Arts in Humanities, with a major in American Literature and Philosophy. Marshall wanted to study in his hometown law school, the University of Maryland School of Law, but did not apply. Because of the school's segregation policy, Marshall instead attended Howard University School of Law, where he worked harder than he had at Lincoln, and his views on discrimination were heavily influenced by the Dean Charles Hamilton Houston. In 1933, he graduated first in his class at Howard. Law Career After graduating from law school, Marshall started a private law practice in Baltimore. He began his 25-year affiliation with the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People in 1934 by representing the organization in the law school discrimination suit Murray v. Pearson. In 1936, Marshall became part of the national staff of the NAACP. In Murray v. Pearson, Marshall represented Donald Gaines Murray a black Amherst College graduate with excellent credentials, who was denied admission to the University of Maryland Law School, because of its segregation policy. 
Black students in Maryland wanting to study law had to attend segregated establishments, Morgan College, the Princess Anne Academy, or out-of-state black institutions. Using the strategy developed by Nathan Margold, Marshall argued that Maryland's segregation policy violated the separate, but equal, doctrine of Plessy v. Ferguson, because the state did not provide a comparable educational opportunity at a state-run black institution. The Maryland Court of Appeals ruled against the state of Maryland and its attorney general, who represented the University of Maryland, stating, Compliance with the Constitution cannot be deferred at the will of the state. Whatever system is adopted for legal education must furnish equality of treatment now. Chief Counsel for the NAACP Legal Defense and Educational Fund At the age of 32, Marshall won U.S. Supreme Court case Chambers v. Florida, 309 U.S. 227. That same year, he founded and became the executive director of the NAACP Legal Defense and Educational Fund. As the head of the Legal Defense Fund, he argued many other civil rights cases before the Supreme Court, most of them successfully, including Smith v. Allwright, 321 U.S. 649, Shelley v. Kramer, 334 U.S. 1, Sweet v. Painter, 339 U.S. 629, and McLaurin v. Oklahoma State Regents, 339 U.S. 637. His most famous case as a lawyer was Brown v. Board of Education of Topeka, 347 U.S. 483, the case in which the Supreme Court ruled that, separate, but equal, public education, as established by Plessy v. Ferguson, was not applicable to public education, because it could never be truly equal. In total, Marshall won 29 out of the 32 cases he argued before the Supreme Court. During the 1950s, Thurgood Marshall developed a friendly relationship with J. Edgar Hoover, the director of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. In 1956, for example, he privately praised Hoover's campaign to discredit T.R.M. Howard, a maverick civil rights leader from Mississippi. During a national speaking tour, Howard criticized the FBI's failure to seriously investigate cases such as the 1955 killers of George W. Lee and Emmett Dill. In a private letter, to Hoover, Marshall, attacked Howard as a rugged individualist who did not speak for the NAACP. Two years earlier Howard had arranged for Marshall to deliver a well-received speech at a rally of his regional council of Negro leadership in Mount Bayou, Mississippi only days before the Brown decision. According to historians David T. Beto and Linda Royce Tobito, Marshall's disdain for Howard was almost visceral. He disliked Howard's militant tone and maverick stance and was well aware that Hoover's attack served to take the heat off the NAACP and provided opportunities for closer collaboration between the NAACP and the FBI in civil rights. Court of Appeals and Solicitor General President John F. Kennedy appointed Marshall to the United States Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit in 1961 to a new seat created on May 19, 1961, by 75 Stat. 80. A group of senators from the South, led by Mississippi's James Eastland, held up his confirmation, so he served, for the first several months under a recess appointment. Marshall remained on that court until 1965, when President Lyndon B. Johnson appointed him to be the United States Solicitor General, the first African American to hold the office. At the time, this made him the highest-ranking black government official in American history, surpassing Robert C. Weaver, Johnson's first Secretary of Housing and Urban Development. As Solicitor General, he won 14 out of the 19 cases that he argued for the government. U.S. Supreme Court On June 13, 1967, President Johnson nominated Marshall to the Supreme Court following the retirement of Justice Tom C. Clark, saying that this was the right thing to do, the right time to do it, the right man and the right place. Marshall was confirmed as an associate justice by a Senate vote of 69-11 on August 30, 1967. He was the 96th person to hold the position, and the first African American. Marshall once bluntly described his legal philosophy as this, you do what you think is right and let the law catch up, a statement which his conservative detractors argued was a sign of his embracement of judicial activism. 
Marshall served on the court for the next 24 years, compiling a liberal record that included strong support for constitutional protection of individual rights, especially the rights of criminal suspects. His most frequent ally on the court was Justice William Brennan, who consistently joined him in supporting abortion rights and opposing the death penalty. Brennan and Marshall concluded in Furman v. Georgia that the death penalty was, in all circumstances, unconstitutional, and never accepted the legitimacy of Gregg v. Georgia, which ruled four years later that the death penalty was constitutional in some circumstances. Thereafter, Brennan nor Marshall dissented from every denial of certiorari in a capital case and from every decision upholding a sentence of death. In 1987, Marshall gave a controversial speech on the occasion of the bicentennial celebrations of the Constitution of the United States. Marshall stated, in conclusion Marshall stated, although best remembered for jurisprudence in the fields of civil rights and criminal procedure, Marshall made significant contributions to other areas of the law as well. In Teamsters v. Derry, he held that the Seventh Amendment entitled the plaintiff to a jury trial in a suit against a labor union for breach of duty of fair representation. In TSC Industries Inc. v. Northway Inc. he articulated a formulation for the standard of materiality in United States securities law that is still applied and used today. In Cottage Savings Association v. Commissioner of Internal Revenue, he weighed in on the income tax consequences of the savings and loan crisis, permitting a savings and loan association to deduct a loss from an exchange of mortgage participation interests. In Personnel Administrator M. A. V. Feeney, Marshall wrote a dissent saying that a law that gave hiring preference to veterans over non-veterans was unconstitutional, because of its inequitable impact on women. Among his many law clerks were attorneys who went on to become judges themselves such as Judge Douglas Ginsburg of the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals, Judge Ralph Winter of the United States Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit, Supreme Court Justice Elena Kagan, as well as notable law professors Susan Loblock, Elizabeth Garrett, Paul Guertz, Dan Kahn, Randall L. Kennedy, Eben Moglen, Rick Pilders, Louis Michael Seidman, Cass Sunstein, and Mark Tushnet and law school deans Paul Mahoney of University of Virginia School of Law, Martha Minow of Harvard Law School, and Richard Ravace of New York University School of Law. Marshall retired from the Supreme Court in 1991 due to declining health. In his retirement press conference on June 28, 1991, he expressed his view that race should not be a factor in choosing his successor, and he denied circulating claims that he was retiring because of frustration or anger over the conservative direction in which the court was heading. He was reportedly unhappy that it would fall to President George H. W. Bush to name his replacement. Bush nominated Clarence Thomas to replace Marshall. Brought to you by Wikividi Documentaries Would you like to know more?